Yeah, okay, welcome everybody. Um, yeah, in the, as we mentioned several times meanwhile, um, I want to cover uh, the new 3D API of uh, Chase Xcraft, or um, more, it's better to say, I want to give you an insight uh, uh, about the uh, about uh, yeah, uh, how the 3D API is evolving. <clears throat> yeah, it's a script. This uh, script that you see uh, uh, on the screen, it's it's also available on uh, on the Moodle course, and uh, it contains all the links which will which, uh, to the JS fiddles you will see. How to yeah, I will make it like this. This is easier. So um, before starting with the workshop, I have to uh, give a big thank to uh, to you Amati Yusko. He gave a fascinating talk last year in the in the JSX Cup conference and presented his uh, work on on 3D with JSX graph and this inspired us to to include it uh, into the uh, into the core um, but uh, if we include it in, into the core we we want to have a, um, a similar API as the 2D interface uh, so this takes took quite a lot of time uh, to to install this uh, to, or to develop this uh, api as far as it's ready yet and uh, before we start some words of caution um, the support for 3d is still considered as preliminary so um, be careful to include it in production and the API may still change even if uh, if it has converged uh, a little bit over the year. Then uh, the main graphics engine as we saw today with in Murray's talk is SVG and um, thus uh, 3D support using SVG has to compete with uh, specialized um, yeah, 3D support offered by OpenGL or WebGL, and we cannot expect that it will be uh, reach the the uh, the speed of of WebGL ever, and uh, and the quality sometimes, in, or in some aspects. Then uh, many attributes, options, methods still still are missing and have to be added, and. Uh, what uh, what's also what users mentioned is so far we have only a parallel projection. Uh, the perspective perspective projection will come will come later, and this is also um, connected to the handling of of a three D uh, construction. Mm, up to now, yeah, I can show it to you. Up to now. We have um, two sliders to manipulate uh, a construction or to view a construction, the so-called elevation and the azimuth. And uh, users suggested to to allow a free dragging of the of the three uh, D view, but and and we will probably have it uh, uh, well in due time, but um, I must say that also this uh, these sliders are uh, of good use, especially in assessment, so that uh, users can or students have to choose a certain perspective and. Uh, which may be part of a solution of an exercise. Okay. 
So, and uh, why not maybe words of caution, but um, uh, some positive aspects. It, I would say the API is already quite usable in calculus and analysis. Yeah, there's a typo. Um, it's less so usable in geometry. There are many methods are still missing. So Vigand will tell us uh, after my workshop, will show us some examples in his uh, course, a mathematics course for engineers. So uh, it seems to be quite useful. Okay, then no, let's start. So uh, what you see here in this picture is so this is a static picture in the in the PDF is uh, as usually um, as usual um, a chase x graph construction a chase x graph board and it has now this 3D part in the, in it and this is what we call a 3D view. Uh, so a, a 3D view is displayed in a chase x curve board, and um, we didn't test it too much, but a board may also contain multiple 3D views. This may be, may be uh, an interesting, give interesting applications. Um, yeah, and this sliders for azimuth and elevation are displayed by default. We already saw the example. <clears throat> and um, yeah, what is it? So we have uh, a the usual construction of a board. And then uh, we, we create a new 3D view. And the parameters are, um, yeah, you must uh, look it like this. So if we uh, look from, from the top to, the, to this box, then uh, the lower left corner of this box is at uh, position minus six, minus three. And uh, the whole box extends eight units in both directions. So this is eight and uh, this is eight. And then uh, the, the, the cube, which we will see here, with this uh, three sides, um, it has uh, internal coordinates uh, from minus five to five in each direction. So in each direction, we have minus five to five, minus five to five, minus five to five. And of course, this can be changed. Yeah, this is the basic uh, object. It's a 3D view. This uh, view can be customized. Um, so we have uh, six planes or six facets uh, bounding uh, uh, this cube. And the naming convention is, though so this is the, the blue arrow uh, points into the X direction. So uh, uh, the yellow plane in the, in the back, it's uh, called the X plane. So it's uh, the X plane is the, the the plane which is orthogonal, um, which is orthogonal to the direction X, and um, <clears throat> well, and and uh, the rear X plane is uh, is. Uh, its X position is minus five. And uh, there's also a front. Uh, the, so and, and the Y plane front is, uh, so this is the Y direction. The, that means Y plane front is uh, the blue uh, plane here. Yeah, okay. And uh, this can be styled. For example, here, the X plane rear is has three color yellow and it contains a mesh. No, it, it contains no mesh. So this is the yellow plane. And the front, uh, Y plane front is the blue one. And all uh, colors have 
some uh, we use gradient colors to improve the 3d impression and the second color can be changed uh, uh too so yeah you can yeah you can change it too then uh the set plane yeah and then we can also uh, style the um give attributes uh, to the axis displayed on these planes though there may be there are probably or they there are usually two axes displayed on on each plane and uh yeah the, this can be uh accessed by x plane rear y axis and z axis and and so on yeah <clears throat> Okay, so this is, uh, you can see the example here. It's, it looks like this. Could you please switch to JavaScript tab? Thanks. Okay, and uh, yeah, and you see the here, the, uh, the, the there's an x axis and probably also a y axis and a z axis. You can style them too. And at the moment, um, um, while the the x the main axis have to be centered, um, <clears throat> it will be possible to do it in MATLAB, MATLAB style too. So that these uh, lines will be the uh, the axis, but this is uh, has to be done. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, we have three D elements. Um. Yeah. Uh, maybe one more thing is so here we have an a slider which is just an uh, usual. Uh, 2D element uh, outside of the, at first sight had nothing to do with this 3D view. It's complete, complete uh, different, uh, completely different. So, okay, then we have 3D elements, and um, the naming convention is uh, so we everything was written uh, in small letters, and it ends with a 3D. So we have a point 3D, line 3D, plane 3D, parametric, uh, sorry for the typo, parametric surface, uh, parametric surface, uh, 3D function graph 3D, yeah, and then uh, X is 3D, and view 3D is a little bit um, different um, uh, because it's a board element. So namely, uh, to construct a 3D element, you have to, or we have to use view create, uh, and then the usual stuff, uh, the parameters, uh, because we want to explicitly uh, uh, create a point, for example, in a certain view. And also, if we uh, have some 2D, 2D elements in that view, we have to use view create. So we will see an example later. And all 3D elements in JSX graph possess a subject object element 2D, which contains the projection of the 3D object to the 2D board. So what does it mean? So here we have a free point. And sorry about this naming. This is a glitch in, uh, in 1.46. So it's already fixed in, the, in GitHub. So yeah, let's start with this example. Let's have a look at this example. Yeah, uh, so we have this view, same view as before. The view will be the same uh, throughout uh, the whole workshop. And um, so we have this view, this is uh, created in the board. And now we call view create point 3D and three coordinates. This gives us uh, uh, 
this uh, this point st and maybe we name it a points always have the name a the first point so, okay yeah and uh, so at the end of the day what you see here is an svg element or in uh it's an SVG element, and of course, it's an element in a JSX graph board, so it's a 2D point. And uh, you have access uh, to this 2D board point by uh, um, uh, uh, so this is the uh, point P element to P. Okay, so if you for some reason want to change this uh, or have to access to this uh, chase extra point, you have to access this point. So uh, the the point P itself in that sense doesn't have an, an SVG node, doesn't possess a rent node as Barry said today. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So the the API is more or less the same as we as we as you are probably used to. Then uh, we also have glider points. I know glider is a very German English word, uh, but we stick to it. Oh yeah. So gliders are bound to a three D surface like this sphere you see in this uh, example. Uh, this, so the surface may be a curved surface or just a plane. And um, yeah, and for the moment we still use point 3D for constructing gliders, but this may change, I, I'm not sure yet. So uh, how, we do, how do we do it? Let's see the code. Uh, forget about the sphere for a moment. Just uh, though the sphere is uh, uh, stored in this variable C, this is all let's like this on this sphere C. Okay, and the uh, 3D point uh, is uh, now is uh, we choose two, two numbers. Well, uh, stop. Uh, we, we just supply three coordinates, the coordinate values, an X coordinate, Y coordinate, and Z coordinate. And uh, the object, uh, the, the glider should live on, namely the sphere. And so these three coordinate values are the initial position of the glider or the, um, the position from which the glider is project, the point is projected to the surface. It must not be uh, initially on the surface. Yeah, and then uh, the surface. So uh, we can uh, change this glider and it lives on the surface uh, while here's a free point and it, it can be chosen freely. And this glider always lives on the on the surface. And uh, one more thing: at the moment, points, even free points, are somehow gliders because we um, uh, we cannot uh, drag this glider out of it of its set position. So the set position in this example is always two. Um, Probably we will uh, do with the mouse. Uh, it uh, we will have to. The user has to uh, press the shift key some uh, to 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 change the y the z coordinate. Uh, this is not av available yet. Maybe well, so we are not sure about uh, about uh, uh, the touch. Gesture, the, the, how we implement changing of the set coordinate with on a touch screen. So this is not done yet. Yeah. 
Okay, and uh, also uh, the the free glider, the free point cannot or no point can be moved outside of the box of the cube. Okay. Yeah. Then, <clears throat> okay, these were the zero dimensional elements. Now we come to lines. Um, a line can be constructed in two variants, namely, uh, as a, so more or less as the geometric way and the analytic geometry way, the synthetic geometry way and the analytic geometry way. Um, so, uh, yeah, just have a look at the code. Um, here we have um, three lines or line segments. The first uh, segment, is, uh, the first line segment is defined by these two points. Yeah, like it should be. And yeah. Then uh, the, the second one is done in the same way, but it uses a sub element, uh, a sub object of the first uh, segment, namely uh, the point one of the first segment. Okay. And it uh, uses, uh, you can supply as input, as parameters, you can supply coordinate arrays, functions return and coordinate arrays or uh, points. Actually functions are only possible in the source code, not on, in 1.46. And uh, the analytic geometry way is, um, well, uh, to supply a point and uh, a one-dimensional one subspace, so vector uh, subspace, um, which means uh, yeah, a, a basis uh, or one vector and a range. So yeah, this was too much. So uh, a line is given in the second uh, variant by a point, a direction, and a range. So this is uh, the the blue one. So it's a vertical uh, line uh, from minus two to four. <clears throat> and yeah. okay, and uh, just to be uh, in a in a in a second example. Um, I just want to remind you about the 2D API. Um, the many dynamic effects can be achieved by by using uh, dependent points or dependent objects, which means uh, we supply a function as a parameter or functions as parameters. And here, the second example, we create a second point. So the point P is at one, one, two. Here we create a second point Q. Uh, and it's defined by a function which returns three values uh, dependent on the position of, of P. And uh, this now looks like, looks like this. So Q cannot be dragged about P. Okay, then uh, we go to curves uh, and we, Chase Xcraft now is able to uh, display parameter curves. A parameter curve is a map from R to R to the power of three. Uh, it may look like this. And um, yeah, there are also three vers uh, two versions, two alternatives. Namely, you have to supply uh, three functions, all having one parameter, the parameter t, and uh, they define the x, y, and z coordinate. 
uh, or you uh, supply one curve returning three values. And it looks like, like this. Or, so this was uh, the, the first example uh, with three functions. And of course, a, a range, um, uh, a definition range for, for the parameter t. And uh, in the second example, uh, Oh, I don't have it. Uh, yeah, maybe it's not that important. It's the same, but uh, oh, it's it's a related curve. It's it's a, another parametric curve with these with these. Uh, does it exist? No, I spoiled the fiddle. Sorry, I will. I will add it later. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Sorry about this. Then uh, we increase the dimension and go to dimension two, um, uh, namely planes. And there have to be two situations to be distinguished, namely finite facets and infinite planes. So what is a finite facet? It's, uh, for example, it's a polyt, uh, well, it's a polygon in three-dimensional space. Uh, for example, a rectangle like this, and uh, we immediately go to the code. Yeah, here we are. So it's a rectangle, and uh, what is it? Uh, it's also uh, supplied in the analytic geometry style. You, we have to, we need a point, two directions and uh, two ranges. This is the, yeah, uh, this is a rectangle. And uh, the second case is an infinite plane, which uh, is uh, automatically cut off at this bounding cube. At the moment, uh, the cutting off of rectangles is not, uh, of the facets is, uh, is is not implemented. So uh, how does uh, how does it look like? Yeah, like uh, we give a point, two directions. Uh, so these uh, entries in these uh, in these coordinates can also be functions and uh, two ranges. And it looks like like this. And uh, as you see in the code, the direction is somehow uh, dependent on this on this slider in the board. So you have access to all board elements, of course. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the mesh in in for. Infinite planes is also not, not yet working. Then we can intersect planes, just an, an example. So we have two planes as before, two infinite planes. Um, yeah, and uh, the important part is below. Uh, we create, uh, there's the, at the moment, there's the method intersection plane plane which uh, gives us an array of length two containing two coordinates. So this has to be uh, used in a dynamic way. So we uh, wrap uh, another map, uh, another function around it and uh, in return uh, the first point and the second point. And uh, yeah, and then we uh, create a 3D line through these two points. And so this is this gray line and it changes with the, uh, it adapts to the, to the planes. Okay. This may, of course, this is a little bit complicated at the moment. This may, may be improved. 
Um, yeah, and for some um, objects, we don't have a 3D object now. For example, a triangle is, is not yet implemented. But for this, we can also use 2D polygons, for example. Or at the moment, we have to use them. Um, why does it work? Well, what's happening here between 2D and 3D or the 3D projection to 2D is let's it, at the end of the day, it's a uh, projective transformation, which means a, a multiplication with a four by four matrix. And such a projection uh, leaves uh, maps lines to lines. And, and so uh, we can also use uh, um, as a workaround, we can use 2D objects. Let's have a like, let's look at the example. So uh, um, yeah, we have three points in space, uh, three, three, three D points. Okay, and now we also uh, create with the in the view. So it's view create polygon, and it uh, accesses the two the two D elements sub sub elements of the three points, and it acts on on these points. Yeah. <clears throat> then uh, we can have solids. Uh, this is uh, quite cumbersome at the moment. Um, of course, we will provide uh, some some templates for them, like a cube or, or like an icosahedron. So uh, at the moment we. We have to compute these points by hand and, and add them. Yeah. And uh, as you see, these are polygons uh, using the element 2D uh, sub objects. Yeah. Okay, now uh, uh, we can come to curved objects, uh, namely parametric surfaces. What's a parametric surface? It's a map from uh, R2 to R3. And uh, to implement such a parametric surface, we have to supply, we, we also have two alternatives. Namely, either we supply three functions from R2 to R, or uh, and ranges for, for the parameters U and V, or just, uh, or we supply one functions, one function from R2 to R3, uh, which depends on two parameters, U and V, and returns uh, three, Uh, which returns three values. Um, yeah, and additionally, in the in the uh, in the attributes, we have to set the attributes, or we can set the attributes steps u and steps v, uh, which uh, uh, defines the definition uh, the 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 uh, density of the mesh. So here's the example. Um, <clears throat> this is the torus, and it also depends on the slider. You can uh, make it dynamic. And um, yeah, and uh, in this case, we return three functions of oh, the, the, this uh, parametric surface 3D. Um, as its parameter three functions and uh, and two ranges defining this torus and the steps v so we have the steps v we can uh, decrease the amount and then it's a little bit more coarse so 
or maybe even less. So, and uh, yeah, and steps U is uh, the other the the other lines. It's clear. Yeah, <clears throat> and the uh, the other the alternative. Um, way to use parameteric surface is to return one function. For example, here we have the sphere and uh, we also can reduce the uh, amount of lines. And now it's a, uh, it's different. It's, there are less lines now. Yeah, it's, it's doesn't matter what you, personal taste or it depends on the situation which type of parameters you are using okay uh, then uh, <coughs> so uh, param uh, parametric surface 3d is the main object to handle surfaces everything else is based on this uh, for example, now we have access to a ruled surface. What is a ruled surface? It's uh, we have two such maps from R2 to R3, and the ruled surface is a linear combination of these two maps. Or usually, it's it's a convex combination. Means this parameter v runs from zero to one, and uh, this is quite easy now. But this is an example of a ruled surface. So. Um, we have uh, uh, yeah. Let's look at the example. It's better to have an example. So uh, if we set uh, this uh, phi uh, to zero, then it's a cylinder, and um, so phi is zero. Then we have just uh, uh, the definition of uh, though these first two uh, functions define uh, define circles define a circle define a circle and uh, the third uh, function is a linear function uh, well ranging from uh yeah from from here to here and um well a ruled surface is now everything uh so a view is running from uh zero to one and uh yeah and and you can visualize it by just by setting steps v to one so steps v to one means actually uh, Exactly, it means uh, using two two steps, so zero and one, and then uh, you you get it like this. And uh, now we can vary uh, change uh, phi, and we get the hyperboloid, and we can increase the density the other direction, and get it like this. Yeah. So these are ruled surfaces, <clears throat> and finally we have uh, and ruled third surfaces uh, open the door to many many vis visualizations. And now finally we have a three D function graph. It's a, uh, a map from R two to R, and it's visualized like this. So actually it's also parametric surface, and uh, the the first coordinate the, the the first two functions are the identity function x to x and y to y yeah and uh let's have a look at the example um so we have this uh function uh, s times x times y plus 2 so we can change s And additionally, um, we can manipulate. Uh, so we have a point which is projected on this surface, 
and we display the gradient gradient plane in this in this uh, in this surface on on the surface. Um, I don't want to explain it uh, uh, now because we are running off, out of time, and and Vigan will show a much nicer example. Yeah, and uh, just one hint here: we removed all but one facets of the cube, so uh, it's also quite it's quite of uh, uh, well a nice view of of the three D situation. Yeah, and uh, if you want to see more uh, examples, you can go to this link. So here we have a function plotter and uh, some examples you already saw. And here, for example, is, a, is another curve, which is pre computed and just displayed with an uh, animation. Um, here is also a root surface, a client bottle. Is it a, no, it's a, not a root surface, it's a, just a parametric surface. And uh, uh, here's a root uh, surface, namely the, the Oloid, a very fascinating uh, object. Möbius uh, strip is also a root surface, hyperboloid sphere, then uh, solids curves on, on parametric surfaces. Yeah, that's it. And uh, finally, some of the doc, the AP docs is already written, but not, uh, not everything. For example, here we have the function 3D, there you can see uh, the parameters. And uh, again, I want to say many things are, this is a work in progress, many things are missing, many options, methods, special cases. Um, yeah. Uh, then of course, uh, the next step is to, to uh, display filled surfaces with, uh, with surface removal, hidden surface removal. There we will see how much, uh, uh, performance we can get out of it. Um, yeah, let's see. I cannot promise this, promise anything. Yeah, and I would be very happy happy if you send us suggestions, bug reports, and the optimal thing uh, would be to to supply patches, uh, unit tests, and so on. So many thanks, and uh, I give the word over to 